Alabama versus Auburn. For over 90 years, college football's greatest rivalry. This is the game of the season. It's almost bigger than life. When you're born in Alabama, you have to choose. You can't be either or. You have to choose. You're either Alabama or you're Auburn. Both sides will play as hard as they can play. It'd be like a heavyweight fight. You got diehard Alabama fans. You got diehard Auburn fans. You know, once you get them together, you know, it's going to be a lot of bad blood. The Alabama people have an attitude that uh, they're a lot better than Auburn people. We're just not the real braggers. We don't give a lot of roll tides and all that. Alabama football fans have always thought they were just better than Auburn fans. Till fairly recently, till Auburn whipped them a few times, and that kind of changed it around. Very few days go by. Somebody didn't say something to me about the Alabama-Auburn game. Here in Tuscaloosa, uh, the most important thing of the year is to beat Auburn. We could lose nine games a year, and if we beat Auburn, we've had a great, great year. And when I think back to in 1989, to the feeling is the feeling of losing to those guys. And I looked at senior, I looked in all of the seniors' eyes at the time, and it's like, you know, it's a terrible feeling, sickening feeling. Today's game takes place at Legion Field with Auburn as the home team. Or is it? It's our home game this time. That's a bunch of bunk. It is a, an Alabama field. With the majority of the people in Birmingham are for Alabama. Supposedly 70,000 uh, open tickets out and only about 10,000 Alabama tickets out. Uh, so the crowd should be predominantly war eagle. We're giving up this game today and we're playing it in Birmingham. But we got December the 2nd, 1989. And no matter what else ever may happen in the history of all, we've been to the mountaintop. Everybody right now is a little bit apprehensive. All them people, they're scared, they're scared they're going to get beat. Alabama people worried 9 and 1 we're going to lose all of them. It's the best feeling when you win and the absolute worst when you lose. And I've, I've been through both of them and, uh, and I'm, I know they have to live with it year round. So much to celebrate. Corbell Champagne. To have any sport right at your fingertips, just put this in your hand. The Casio Sports Vision Color TV. It's perfect for the sport in your life. The Casio Sports Vision Color TV. Available at Kmart. Casio. Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. And about two minutes ago, this place absolutely exploded when those two teams came out on the field. And that's just a preview of what we should expect for the entire afternoon. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of CFA football. Now, before we talk football, a little non-football business I need to get across to you. This is for people who are not from this part of the world and those that are not familiar with the Eric Ramsey tapes. Eric Ramsey is a former football player at Auburn University. He has accused both coaches and Auburn boosters of giving him illegal inducements. He also says he has at least 100 tapes to back up those allegations. 
Well, the constants in the matter are there are tapes. Some of them have been played. The NCAA, we talked with them last night, and David Burr said there is no official investigation of Auburn University. They're looking into it. They've listened to some of the tapes. But right now, nothing official against Auburn. But right now, it is the biggest news story in this entire state. And Mike Gottfried, one thing is for sure, it has had a definite bearing on the season for the Auburn Tigers. Ron, it has. They were 3-0 and when the tapes were released. It has affected the focus and the concentration of this football team. And the classless manner in which the attorney uh, delays keep putting out the tapes has really hurt this football what team. What do you expect today? Well, I think there's going to be a game played close to the best by both teams. Field position football, play to your defense, and the kicking game. Adrian Karsten is down on the field. Let's go down and get this report from him. Adrian. Well, Ron, for 15 weeks, I've tried to describe what college football feels like down here, but I'll be honest with you, I have never felt the kind of emotion going into this game. The fans and the players internalize this rivalry. The fear of losing this game is actually greater than the anticipation and joy of winning it. If you win it, you're considered a better person, a better citizen of the state of Alabama just because you win this football game. Ron? Okay, Adrian, from the time that we walked into the city and then into the stadium yesterday afternoon, we have felt it just as you have felt. And if you are truly a football fan, even if you're not from this part of the world, you need to one time try to get a ticket and come down and just witness what is about to happen here at Legion Field. Von Wilde's kick. That's David Palmer at the goal line. Oh. The starting lineup for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Saran Stacy, well, he's got almost 1,000 yards. He scored 10 touchdowns. They need a huge one out of him today. At the wide receiving position, we kind of get the feeling that Prince Wembley, for as few times as they might throw, that he might be a decoy guy. Look for number 32. And up front, they need a big game out of Toby Shields, the offensive center. He's the guy that will have the offensive line calls and have to take on that tough Auburn defensive front. Well, we have opened this ball game with a personal foul penalty as you look at the back of young Mr. Barker. Jay, Jesus only a freshman right from field. Trussville, Alabama. The officials today, the referee is Mac A. Gentry. And this is a post-play foul, Mike, so it will be a first and 25 for Gene Stallings' team. Well, it's a tough way to start the ball game. I said in the open that I expect it to be a game played where you played your defense. I would figure unless somebody gets a big lead, just figure your quarterbacks to throw anywhere from 12 to 17 passes in this game but the key is on first down for both teams now they have first and 25 so they're starting off in a very difficult position play action wanted to throw a shuttle pass he will take it forward to the 20 yard line but Alabama comes out with a little different wrinkle he wanted to throw a shuttle pass here are the starters for the Tigers on defense. Keep an eye on John Wilson. What a leader he has been on the field and also with the off the field problems for the Auburn Tigers. In the middle, this is the guy that leads them 142 tackles, Darrell Crawford. And in the secondary, Fred Smith's only a freshman, but he leads the Tigers with four interceptions. Kevin Turner crosses the 24 to the 25. And now it's going to be third down, and the line to make is out to the 38-yard line. Well, it's clear to see the defensive strategy of Auburn right off the bat in the first two plays. You could circle nine defenders up close to the line of scrimmage. The only people, the two corners are wide. There you see Pad Dye, six and four versus Alabama. So the Auburn strategy in the first two plays, make them beat us throwing the football. Kevin Lee and Prince Wimbley, they are at the top of your screen. Stacy, nobody, yep, they did pick him up, but it doesn't matter. Parker is grabbed by Cromarty, and he will be down at the 21. Loss of five. Well, there was nothing there on the screen, Ron. They just, uh, real good job by Auburn defending it. Again, the penalty on the kickoff is what hurt Auburn in their first drive. It's Tank Williamson. You see his average. His longest is 53. He is kicking into a mild breeze. That's Bailey. An average of almost 14 yards per return. Bailey 
gets one block, and he'll have four yards on the return. Let's meet the Tigers on offense. Joe Frazier, good fight in name, and that's what he's going to have to do today. He's the leading rusher for the Auburn Tigers. We get a feeling maybe Dale Overton might be the guy that Stan White looks to when they throw the football. And up front, it is a good veteran offensive line, but Bob Meeks will have his hands full against the All-American Robert Stewart. Great field position for Auburn to start out. This is an offense that doesn't have a lot of confidence. Joe Frazier has five yards. And now let's meet the Crimson Tide on defense. We mentioned Stewart. He's the All-American. He's a former running back, Ashford, Alabama. The leading tackler for the Crimson Tide, he's the headhunter, John Sullen. You'll hear number 90's name called a lot today. And in the secondary, the leader in the SEC in interceptions with five, Antonio Lang. Two tight ends for the Tigers on second and three. Frazier has five, six, and seven, and a first down to the Alabama 39-yard line. Stacy Harrison, the strong safety, finally stopping. What Auburn did was go to a two-tight end set. They watched to see the side that George Stewart lined up on. He was lined up to the left. They came back the other way to their left side. Meeks and Blake with two good blocks. Frazier again. He will be popped at the line of scrimmage by middle linebacker Derek Oden. And the junior from Tuscaloosa will ride him down after a short game. Auburn has come out and give a couple different formations to Alabama. The one formation they started out on first down is an unbalanced line. They have the tight end to the left, but they move the tackle, offensive tackle, over to the right side. Three carries now for Frazier for 18 yards. You saw Tony Russell, 84, come on just a moment ago. Junior from Birmingham bringing the play. Frazier again, and this time Alabama smells it out. Good second effort, but Robert Stewart is the man who upended him first, number 34. The key in Alabama's defense is their front three players. Watch number 34, the middle guard, Stewart. Watch him come off the block, come back in and make the tackle. Number 56, Derek Oden, also in on the tackle. Okay, those three men in the middle, very strong and very active. And Sullen, Stewart, and Oden. It is third down. Auburn needs the 29. Frazier, good cut. He will have the first down. Mike, there was not really a hole where the play was designed, and he cut it back to the left for seven. Key block by Reed McMillan, number 41. George Teague, number 13, makes the play. Watch the isolation play. They double George Stewart. There's a double team. Here comes the block by McMillan on the linebacker. Look at the hole. Now George Teague, number 13, who is a very active free safety, makes the tackle. Baxter and Victor Hall, two tight ends in the ballgame, and two wide receivers go right to the top of your screen. Joe Frazier, and he slips down as he has to try to make a cut. Eric Curry actually got a very small piece of him, but he's the one who caused Frazier to go down. Talk about a big game now. This is a tight end right here. The tackle is over here. Now, this is another tight end coming in motion. You, when you get into a game like this, you want to show different sets and different formations. Alabama just did a nice job adjusting to that. Blossom first down. That's the first time it's happened to the Tigers. They scrimmage for the second and 11. They go with McMillan, the fullback. There is nothing there because of big number 34, Robert Stewart, the senior from Ashford, 6 feet 270. And you might wonder why a nose guard wears 34. I mentioned the fact he is a former running back. They've never changed his number. Well, he was a high school running back. He came here. They you see in 1987, they moved him to linebacker, 88 back to running back. He was suspended in 89. 90 moved to middle guard and found the homes in the All-American. On third down, the pitch goes to Alex Smith, and he will be stopped by Derek Oden, just inside the 25. Von Weil 
comes on from the Auburn side of the field. Both teams are going to try to take the pressure off the young quarterbacks early in the ball game. That's why all the running games so far. Von Weil so far this year, 13 of 22. This will be a 42-yard attempt. He yanked it off to the left and no good. Those in crimson and white are loving it. We'll take a break. Much to celebrate. Corbell Champagne. Part of the capacity crowd is Gene Stalin faces the sideline. His ball club with a big stop, though, and they have it just across their own 24. Stacy hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he'll be knocked down for a loss by Clarence Morton. Let's get this re report from Tim Brando. Tim? All right, Ron, another major interstate rivalry heard round the world today. Florida State with a chance, fourth and nine, trailing 14 to nine. Casey Weldon going to work. But watch as the pass is batted down by free safety Will White. Florida wins it, and Steve Spurrier will join Lee Corso and I live at halftime. On second and 12. The pitch back to Stacy. He faked the reverse, and he will get nothing again. This time, James Willis will knock him down for what appears to be another Alabama loss. And, Mike, we might mention that on the right side, John Stevenson, number 69, who's only a freshman, but he is not there. He was suspended by his head coach and Patterson. Roosevelt Patterson, number 77, is replacing him. Causes him a little problem in the offensive line because they don't have much depth at the tackle position. Barker straight in the pocket, has it incomplete at the 30, and Kevin Lee fought it instead of caressing it and bringing it down. It will be punting time for the Crimson Tide. Wayne Hall, the defensive coordinator, blitz Jay Barker. When you have a freshman quarterback and you're playing against a freshman, yeah, he deserved the blitz, and you have to find out whether he can handle it right away. Jay Barker did a pretty good job. Threw the ball on the mark, just wasn't uh, able to make the completion. Thomas Bailey, number 18, retreats to the 45. That's a good hanging spiral. And a late flag comes back at the 45-yard line. 42 yards in the punt and seven on the return. meeting between Alabama Auburn, 7 o'clock, the residents in college football scoreboard, that it's 7.30, more CFA football, San Diego State against number one Miami, and at 10.30, we'll take you to Hawaii, it is Notre Dame against Hawaii, Sports Center at halftime, and at 1.30, more Sports Center, all today, right here on ESPN. Alex Smith turns the corner for five, and now six, it's Eric Curry who's holding on to him. Mike, you were right off the top of this telecast and you said there would be a great reluctance to throw the football. Boy, has there been. See the formation again, Ron? That's a tight end on the, on the right side as you're facing and then the tackle, both tackles are together on the same side. And what, you're ha what you have now is a toss sweep. They're just trying to overbalance the line and try to get the sweep. But Alabama did a nice job of covering it up. Teapot Brown, number 26, has checked into the ball game, one of the running backs. Smith tries to get to the outside in that great lateral pursuit by Alabama. It's on the ground, and the tide has recovered at the 30. Steve Webb, the senior from Holt, Alabama. 
That's the kind of game it's going to be, Ron. If you're calling the plays offensively, you're trying to set your, your team up to play a defensive football game, and turnovers are such a big key. Alex Smith, number 21, just trying to get extra yardage. He stopped at the corner. Now he tries to come back inside. There's the hit again by number 13, George Teague, who's so active. Also, Lemansky Hall, I believe, helped out in knocking that football away. Sharan Stacy goes for a couple, now three. And this is the kind of rugged running warfare it's going to be, a combination of Willis and Wilson on the stop. Neither team cares about aesthetics. They don't care if they're very pretty. They just want to get the field position and get it done. Now, Alabama went to an unbalanced line on that play. Now, if you're going to let your quarterback throw, this is the area you're wanting to throw. But what Gene Stallings wants to come away with here, he wants to draw first blood in this game. We have no score. Five minutes and 42 seconds left in this opening quarter. Parker wants a timeout. He was about to get caught as the 25-second clock was down. We'll take it with him. No score. 5.31 left in this opening quarter. With more power than standard cordless screwdrivers and 40-inch pounds of torque, the Black & Decker Power Driver is more than a match for any job. The it's hard to try to hold this football team together and to give them a chance to win a big football game. And, uh, and I think we've got a chance. They are the Auburn Tigers, but of course War Eagle is the cry. And the War Eagle has made the journey up from the, the prettiest little city on the plains. The cry right now is defense. Reverse to Palmer, and he wants to throw. And he will be hit by Cromarty and knocked down. Good heavens, he had two people in the end zone, but he didn't have time to look for him. Stacy was in the end zone, and also the tight end, Steve Buskey. Well, this is the area in your 30-yard line. Watch the pitch now. They want to make it look like the Saran Stacy at the toss week. Now David Palmer around. He just waits a little bit too long to get rid of the football. He had a chance. He had two receivers running open down the middle of the football field. So in the opening quarter, now Alabama has attempted two trick plays. Both have not gotten off the ground. Both have backfired. Yep. Pressure on Barker, and he will be sacked. That ball is loose. Alabama knocked it out. Nope. Auburn has recovered at the 37. go back to throw the football as I said earlier it's going to be a game of defensive football here's the pressure by Chucky Johnson 79 now the ball gets hit loose by number 92 Ricky Sutton ball came down but it looked like it was going to go out of bounds and it hit a player and went back up inside was recovered by Auburn big break for Auburn on defense that's when I said that it would be Alabama football because they had knocked it out of bounds with possession left as you look at Frazier carrying straight up the middle but as Mike said, it hit a player and stayed on the field, and Pierce made the recovery. So the turnover by Auburn does not come out to haunt them. Both defenses responded to sudden change. When the change occurred, both defenses made sure that they didn't allow a score. Auburn is just settled on running the football right at Alabama, which is a difficult chore because the upfront people of Alabama are very, very solid. Tigers with two tight ends, two wide receivers. Frazier just runs right into the teeth of it. Eric Curry is the first man there. And for anyone who is anxious in the crowd and maybe saying, well, maybe a little more excitement, you're going to see this all afternoon long. Now, this is going to be the type of game. You have Tommy Bowden, who's the offensive coordinator in Malmore. Here's Tommy Bowden, taught by his father. He gives credit to Homer Smith and Steve Sloan. But his ball club in the first three games dropped 20 passes. Then they had a problem with pass protection. Then the conference was shaken a little bit. Now they just need to have some success to get that back. of the play action. Too high and it's intercepted. 
George Teague. When you have a free safety like George Teague, he's just so active. Watch the free safety here. You're going to see Stan White fake and come out this way. And he's going to look for his tight end coming across. Here's the fake. Watch George Teague. He just sits in the middle. The ball is just thrown high. He's there for the deflection and the big interception. Stan White did the same thing last year. When he gets happy feet, when he gets nervous and doesn't set in the pocket, he throws high. And it cost him against Florida dearly last year. Well, the way this game is starting, I'll tell you, you're going to see very few passes. I said between 12 and 16 on both teams if it stays close, but uh, they're just going to turn it over to the defense. Yeah, but that turnover with the pass right there, we may not see another one by Auburn until the second quarter. <laughs> if then. Kevin Turner. He will take it close to the 35-yard line, but for Alabama, it will be a third down, and they need the 29. Well, you look at this defensive front and the strategy of Auburn. Look here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ninth guy's right sitting back here. They have nine people around the football to protect the run. They got the two corners out in pass coverage. Alabama's going to have to try to find a way to spread them out. Crimson Tide 0 for 2 on third down conversions. Gatting complete at the 25. There was a marker deep down in the secondary, but Wembley, the man we talked about off the top of the telecast. And let's see what this flag is. It's all the way across the field. saying they had nine men up last time they had 12 men on the field this time that's what the call is somebody didn't come off and the embarrassing thing is they still made the play work <laughs> right at the end of the play you could see 97 Benny Pierce running to the outside and he was confused now, I don't know if he was the player that was to have come off or not well Jay Bark has been looking at that eight nine man defensive front against the run but that time he looked at 12 and still completing the out pass penalty moves it to the 12 and a half yard line Turner one yard maybe Daryl Crawford 56 one of the first men there and then also 61 Tim Cromarty game as long as it stays within a score I think you'll see the same strategy I, I don't know if uh, even if a score will take Auburn out of what they want to try to do in this game offensively and same with Gene Stallings and his Alabama offense I'm going to try to get the ball in Saran Stacy's hands that's the key for him Stacy gets the block from Turner and he is only going to have one and again it's Cromarty number 61 the junior from Tallahassee Florida now Ron it becomes here's what you're thinking when you're on the sidelines three points are big seven points bigger of course but now you're in a third down situation you don't want to turn over but you do want to take a crack at trying to get seven but you don't want to give up the football so now it's got to be a safe pass if you're going to throw the ball or some type of draw or screen to Saran Stacey Coming with the blitz, and he will be sacked by James Willis. Second time that the Tigers have gotten to him. Alabama pass protection may be affected by the loss of Stevenson a little bit in the first couple plays, but Auburn just came with a big rush. James Willis, the outside linebacker, number 51, the sophomore, 6'3", 230 pounds. Just with a big rush. This attempt by Weatherington, 40, let's make it 38 yards. Tide is on the scoreboard.
Two seconds left in the first quarter. We'll be right back. Alabama on the strength of the Weatherington, the field goal of 38 yards, and they lead three to nothing. Not only do you have a couple fumbles and turnovers right off the bat, but that 12 men on the field was a big penalty because that gave them the field position they needed to score with the field goal. Because with the sack, taking away that uh, penalty yardage, I think it would have been out of his range, Mike. Very important penalty. Steve Cole to kick it off for Alabama. Going to come down to Thomas Bailey. Bailey out across the 27 to the 28-yard line. And with that, the end of the first quarter. So let's take a break. Alabama leads by a field goal. First 15 minutes, as to be expected when you throw as few times as they threw, only took about 28 minutes. White opens it up and hits his tight end, Baxter. Baxter coughs up the football, and it has been recovered by Auburn. Wow. Otis Mounds recovered the fumble. He was the Johnny on the spot. He also added six more yards onto oh. the play. When I saw Auburn early in the year, the position I was most impressed with was the tight end. You're going to see Fred Baxter, number 85, just a big target, 6'4", 240. Good strip by number one, Stacy Harrison. But look at number 25, Otis Mounds, right on the spot for the big recovery. I think we better give uh, Derek Oden also a piece of that. I think he might have knocked it free, Mike, number 56. Teapot Brown with a carry straight into the middle. Derek Oden comes up to make this tackle. The point of the matter is, this football has been on the ground way more Touchdown. than these Touchdown. coaches would like to see. Big game, we right off the bat here. When, when you see this, Gene Stallings bringing his ball club in here yesterday along with Pat Dye. And, uh, it's a big game in the state of Alabama and across the country today. Looking for the other tight end. This is Victor Hall inside the 20. Out of bounds at the 16. Odin and Teague knocked him out. 21 yards. Well, I'll tell you what. I just talked about Fred Baxter. Now look at Victor Hall, number 87. He's going to come across the field. But what really makes this is the fake to the tailback. Watch the linebackers get held with the fake. Watch the fake by Stan White. Watch the linebackers sit in there. Now there goes tight end Victor Hall. Wide open for the catch. Good completion by Stan White. Good fake by the quarterback. White is two of three. One interception. Total of 55 yards. Otis Mounds. Steve Webb and George T combine on the stop. They'll give him down to the 12-yard line. You talk about George Teague, Ron. He may be one of the best free safeties in the country. He's only a junior, but he's so active in the run and the pass plays. He just makes things happen for this defense. He was a cornerback. He has the reputation as being a great hitter. Had that key interception against Tennessee in 1990. He says he'll never forget that one. The unbalanced line situation for Auburn. Joe Frazier back in the ball game gets cracked as he goes inside the 10 to the 9. It's Antonio London, junior from Tullahoma, Tennessee. What's helped this Alabama defense is John Copeland, the junior college player who came in from Hines, Mississippi, because that gave them the third down alignment that they really needed. And what really helped him was he was there in spring practice and he was able to work with the coaches. McMillan straight ahead he's not going to have it and in fact McMillan just barely got on the field they had to rush that play now some of the Auburn players are saying first down but they're spotting that thing at least a yard and a half shy of it that play blew up right from the start Reed McMillan didn't get in in time the fullback sophomore fullback from Selma Alabama and it just didn't have any chance from the start 
Close to the vest. On for the field goal. Pat Dye. Fun wild from 26 yards. We're tied. So the senior John Von Weil knocks this one at three apiece as he knocks it home from right in front. And we'll take a break. 11.53 until halftime. Alabama versus Auburn is brought to you by GMC Trucks, the strength of experience. And by Pizza Hut, home of the supreme four bucks deal. Eddie Blake sitting in front of a fan. I know there's some people around the country saying a fan. That's really kind of gross compared to the weather some folks are having to endure. Palmer fumbles it in the end zone. He does not have to return that. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten and get an update from him, Adrian. Well, Ron, here at Legion Field, they used to split the cloud right down the middle, go 50-50 be about 40,000 students, or 40,000 fans, rather, from each school. During that last offensive drive by Auburn, Pat Dye literally had to turn around and quiet about the 60 to 65,000 Auburn fans. They're too loud as they're going in to score in that last drive. <laughs> too much support, huh? Tied at three. Weatherington with a 38-yard field goal, then Von Weil with a 26-yard field goal. And this penalty is being stepped off against the Crimson Tide. First down and 20. It was a post play foul, half the distance to the goal. And this is the second time that Alabama has taken over the ball with a first and 20 or first and 25 deep in their own territory. Average gain on first down Alabama 1.8, Auburn 8.2. Barker looking for Palmer. Closest person to it was Corey Barlow. Where this penalty hurts Alabama, this is the second penalty again, which was a dead ball penalty. And now you have first and 20. Uh, and that's why Pat, uh, Gene Stallings has decided to try to uh, air one out here on the first down. I'm sure he'll get back and try to get the ball to this tailback on this play. But it, that, those penalties have really hurt Alabama. I mean, the dead ball penalty. Saran Stacy, check it, it's Martin. Crosses the 15 and he's out to the 18, 19 yard line. Carrick and Cunningham, number 47, he's a junior from Peachtree City, Georgia. Comes over to make the stop and now it's gonna be third down for the Crimson Tide. And they need the 30 yard line. If you're an Auburn fan, this is what you wanna see uh, uh, placed on the pressure putting, that they're putting on Jay Barker. Here's the Average yards rushing, Auburn 3.6, Alabama 0. But you want to put them in this situation, third and long. Alabama 1 of 5 on third down conversions. Barker dumps it out wide open on the near sideline is Turner, and he may go. Chris Schelling saves the touchdown. 68 yards. Wow, I tell you what, Jay Barker, and back to pass, both his receivers to the wide side of the field were covered. You're gonna see Kevin Turner, the fullback, he's looking for somebody to block. He's in blocking the whole way. Jay Barker starts to run, sees him as an outlet receiver, then the missed tackle by Fred Smith, number six, then Martin Houston with a big game till Chris Shelley, number 32, knocks him out of bounds. 68 yards, longest play of the game for either team. This is Martin. He'll take it to the 10. Daryl Crawford is there to knock his feet out from under him. I talked, I talked to Wayne Hall yesterday, and he was saying the thing 
like to separate his defense this year. They've had a lot of big plays against them uh, in key situations, and that certainly was a big play to change field position. Well, you would think that the linebacker, and it certainly it would have been a linebacker who had him just, for some reason, turned him loose. Well, he was just lost because he was in pass protection. Then with Jay Barker, there's Mal Moore, the offensive coordinator. Once he starts scrambling, he just saw him as an outlet receiver. Palmer is at quarterback. Touchdown, Alabama. We just talked about very poor field position. Alabama has just gone 90 yards like lightning. Two big plays. They inserted David Palmer, the freshman wide receiver, and the quarterback ran a roll out with his speed. He was able to get in for the score. Another look at number two, Palmer. Just like having another running back in your offense. That's a run all the way on the sprint out by David Palmer. The drive took only one minute and 48 seconds. Take a break. Alabama, 10 to 3. Alabama didn't need very long. Uh, a minute and 48 seconds. We had just commented that they had taken the ball over at their... 10-yard line and actually that is 90 yards on the drive rather than 80 yards because of the 10-yard penalty to half the distance to the goal the biggest of the plays a 68-yard pass safety down it's going to be a pooch kick which will come down at the 22-yard line that's otis mounds Let's take one more look at the touchdown now, I want you to keep your eye on Saran Stacy because you're going to see David Palmer on a rollout, but watch the block that Saran Stacy makes. Moved to an unbalanced front, almost fumbles the ball. You're going to pick Saran Stacy up right here with a block on number 29, Frankie Scarcunas. Now, just missed tackles, David Palmer in the end zone. Ball comes loose after it was in the end zone. Barber's got 12 men on the field right now, and Stan White's going to have to call a timeout. Actually, he did have nine seconds left on the 25-second clock, but he wants to come over and talk it over with the coaches. 9.59 left until halftime. three one interception 55 yards and the two completions have been to the tight ends Baxter and Hall flag has come down white goes long and that one overthrown and out of bounds Herbert Casey is the man that he wanted and the flag is down at the 30. see Stan White standing there conferring with the referee. He told me yesterday during their walkthrough that he has been suffering from the flu and that they are giving him... Motion. Offense. Giving him a lot of different medicine. I asked him if he had been weakened by it. And he said, no, not really. And when you come to a game like this, it just simply wouldn't matter. You play on through it. I think the penalty was on Fred Baxter. 85 came in motion. They have started up the field just a little bit too early. Frazier crosses the 30. George Teague makes the hit, and he brings it out to the 33. 
And now another flag comes down to the secondary. And that one is across the way. See, the ball was at the 33. This is going to come very close to giving Auburn a first down. Because he had picked up about eight on the run. And that was following the five-yard penalty. Ron, people always ask what the big advantage in a game like this if you win. And I think the biggest advantage in this particular situation is Alabama's. If they're going to a bowl game. With the new spring practice rules of how many number of practices you get, Auburn season ends today. They're done. They put their equipment away. Alabama gets three to four weeks of practice. Now, they're not only practicing for that bowl game, but that's a time where you practice your young players. You get an extra spring practice. And that's the advantage that Alabama has over Auburn going to the bowl. Not quite enough for the first down. The ball will be just shy of the 38. You need about a half yard. So Auburn has a down to play with here. They're going to take it straight ahead. That looked fairly obvious. You can see those splits move in with the two tight ends, and they got into their short yardage situation. Stewart and Copeland there to make the tackle. Stan White on his last two passes. Good throws, completions to the tight end. It appears that they're going to try to work the tight ends against the linebackers of Alabama on play action and crossing routes. Alex Smith has come into the ball game of running back for Auburn, number 21, junior from College Park, Georgia. Smith hit at the line of scrimmage, and Robert Stewart, how many times have we called his name already? You can't single Robert Stewart, but when you go to a one-back set, you take away the fullback, you take away the double team because you don't have a lead blocker on the linebacker. So now Bob Meeks, number 70, has to handle Robert Stewart in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And the advantage there goes to Robert Stewart because he's such a strong run performer. Cloudy day here in Birmingham. But the clouds have gone up. A little threat of rain at the start of this one. Now it doesn't look so much like it. White over the middle, wide open, Baxter. 45 at the 40, and Auburn will have the first down, plus about 15. As I said before, they're going to work the tight end. Watch Red Baxter set up and block, and watch the linebacker leave, and then he'll release right in the middle, and Stan White will hit him. Watch the left side. Watch the tight end. Fakes the block. Releases inside, linebacker leaves, and that's the big opening for the big play for Fred Baxter. Baxter now with two catches for 56 yards. Smith knocked down after a gain of a couple. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten. Great to have you along today. The first game of a triple header here on ESPN. Second game will be down in Miami, San Diego State against the top-ranked Hurricanes, and then we'll head out to Hawaii, Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, visiting the Rainbows in our nightcap. Ten to three, our score. Alabama leads. Seven twenty-five left until halftime. And Smith turned the corner. Whoa, my goodness, what a hit. He loses his headgear. Stacy Harrison came up with the hit, and there are one, two, three flags down on the field. Ron, it's holding on Victor Hall, number 87. He just actually pulled down the outside linebacker. Watch number 87 on the block. His hands are inside. He's in pretty good shape here. But all of a sudden, holding. Okay. There's the hold. And Lemansky Hall was the defender. 
You know, Mike, that's one rule that I would love to see changed in college football. The, the minute they allowed the, the offensive linemen and tight ends to open their hands, I think you took the smaller guy out of football. And I think you need to go back and make them close the hands again. Well, they went to that rule to try to help in pass protection, to try to help throwing the football. And, and give defensive coordinators ulcers. It's a bad rule. White just misses McMillan. They had a blocker in front. That play, and now here comes a late flag. Rockwell was coming strong after the quarterback. An eligible receiver downfield. But I, I'm not sure whether Reed McMillan was behind the line of scrimmage because it was a screen all the way. I yeah. don't know where, if he was behind the line of scrimmage, he's okay. That was a screen the whole way. Now, he, he should be, if he stays behind the line of scrimmage, Lyman can go downfield. An eligible receiver gets the offense, he's declined, third down. I think it's a terrible call. Mike he's behind, behind the line, the line of, scrimmage. of scrimmage. That's You're a right. screen pass. It's going to be third down. And the line to make is the 28-yard line. The 28th of Alabama. This is one you have to air out here, Ron, because you got to try to hope for a big play. They're going to split the tight end, Fred Baxter, out 85. But you got to work way down the field and throw the ball deep. Overton slipped down. I don't know if he could have made the turn and picked up the first down, but he had an opportunity. It's good for 12, and it'll be fourth down, Auburn. He was going to try to spin outside and try to spin away from the defensive back, but he's just peeping out from under him. There was a light rain before the game, and uh, he just wasn't able to keep his feet. The Auburn Tigers will go for it, or it would appear so. tackle on fourth down. Look on, they went to the left side. They went to the unbalanced line, put Reed McMillan behind the tight, behind the tackle, put the two tackles together, but Alabama, Eric Curry, number 80, was just sitting there waiting for Joe Frazier, number five. Mike, we talked about what a big day today it is in college football. Uh, I'll tell you in just a moment, tomorrow is another very big day here on ESPN. Quick out pass at the 30-yard line. Saran Stacy had circled out of the backfield. Boy, he really gets punished as he will bring it out to the 35. And we talk about tomorrow. First things first, NFL game day. That begins at noon Eastern time as the guys will set the table for you on what to expect. And then coming back with NFL prime time at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then that is followed by tomorrow night's matchup between the Los Angeles Raiders and the San Diego Chargers. 8 o'clock Eastern time. All right here on ESPN. 3 of 5, 85 yards for Jay Barker. Martin cuts it back, has five, has ten, cut it off at 15 and 16 yards. Lassick, I beg your pardon, rather than Martin. 16 yards in the carry. Derek Lassick, watch the linebacker number 51, 56, up the field, Daryl Crawford. Now here comes the cutback by Derek Lassick, number 25. Now Fred Smith, number 6, is really going to jar him with a great tackle. Stacy into the short side of the field will have a couple again. It's Fred Smith, the freshman from Eufaula. Fred's been a great little player for him. That interception return for a touchdown earlier this year we saw against Tennessee. He leads the team in interceptions. Right, 
starting to have some success on first down. And then put them in a situation where it's a little bit easier for them. Last first down play, they get five yards on the pass to Saran Stacy. Saran Stacy on the run picks up four. Gives you a little bit better options with Jay Barker. Five minutes, 12 seconds left until halftime. 10-3 Alabama. Stacy on the reverse. No, he holds on to it. I beg your pardon. It was Lee who came around and they faked it to him. Might have been better served to have given it to him as Auburn was right there with Crawford and Cromarty. Gabe Barker's played well in this first half. Made some big plays. The biggest play was a 68 yard pass to Martin Houston. He's now in another third and seven situation. Too tall. Wembley is the man he wanted. So Alabama is now two of seven on third down conversions. And they had a good drive going. And as Mike pointed out, a couple of first downs that they pop big plays on, but they can't sustain it. Well, you don't feel bad if you're the offensive coordinator because you're able to move it out to the 45 yard line. You should be able to pick, kick Auburn into the hole. Tank Williamson, good coverage kick here. And that one will go into the end zone. Alabama tries to knock it back out, but it will be back to the 20. Adrian Karsten down on the field. What do you have for us? Well, Ron, Jim Voss, a former Auburn wrestler, is currently commanding officer of Atlantis. The space hole is currently 22 miles above us here. Got a message from War Eagle 6 this morning. How you doing? Got War Eagle, the, uh, not only the word itself, but the fight song of Auburn. Woken up this morning, awake this morning to the fight song. The, the feeling down here seems to be, Ron, if, if Auburn wins the game, they're all going to be sky high. And if they lose, they figure up that the space shuttle is the only safe place for them. <laughs> okay, Adrian. Now, I would move as quickly away from that prop as I could if I were you. Otis Mounds sneaks through a small opening close to the 30-yard line as John Copeland and Derek Oden combine on the stop. Clock ticks down, Ron. Auburn's looking for a nice, long drive. Like to try to pick up some type of big pass play. And, and I think, it, again, they'll be looking for their tight ends if they throw the football. Mounds again. Good little cut, and he will have the first down. Jim Sullins was the man who got a hand on him. And the Crimson Tide with the player shaking up. See Pat Sullivan to the right of Pat Dye, the former quarterback, works with Stan White as the quarterback coach. Tommy Bowden is the offensive coordinator. He's up in the press box, hooked up in this phone, phone hookup, making the play calls. Some of the injury to the player, 337 until halftime. Alabama leads 10-3. That's a look at John Sullins. He is okay, but the senior from Oxford, Mississippi, was shaken up on the play and had to come out. He leads Alabama in tackles. Total of 68. First and 10 for the Tigers from their own 31. Otis Mounds grabbed and spun down at the 33. George Teague, one of the first men, along with Odin. Derek Oden made that play because he just met the block of the fullback and just didn't give up an inch. We have already for Oden 11 tackles in the ballgame. That's a great entire game, let alone one half. Again, Auburn runs into the boundary and guess who? We've also called his name a bunch, Copeland. 94, 34, <laughs> and 56. We caught Robert Stewart on a on a uh, slant move. Robert lined up on the center, and then the snap Push of the down. ball shot Push the down. gap to the left oh. side, beat the block of the center. The right guard pulled. He came right behind him and made the tackle with Otis Mounds. 
Third down, and the line to make is the 41. And they won't come close as Richardson is going to be hit by Michael Rogers. Coming up at halftime, Tim Brando and Lee Corso will give you the latest update on games in progress and also recap today's College Football Saturday. It's coming up at halftime. Tried to catch him on a draw around on third and long yardage. Didn't work. Alabama read it. Made the play, forcing Auburn to punt the football. This is the first punt for Auburn. They're trailing 10 to 3. It's the first time that George has come on. And an exciting punt returner, David Palmer. Palmer averages almost 17 in return, and let's watch the coverage by the Auburn Tigers on this one. 203 remaining until halftime. The reason for the delay is Alabama had called a timeout to get their special teams on the field. Alabama has one timeout left to work with. 203 on the clock. the side of his foot that one will barely make the 40 yard line Adrian Carson not a good putt right there what do you have for us I'll tell you what Ron as great as this game is there's a period for about 40 years when they didn't play this rivalry it wasn't just because the games were so tough this there was a lot of bad blood and actually big misconception what came down to the number of players each team could bring the stipend each player would get per day and where the officials would come from well, after 40 years, they literally buried the hatchet a couple of uh, blocks from here at Woodrow Wilson Park. It almost took an act of legislation to get this game played again, but they've been playing ever since 1948. Bumps it once. He's going for Palmer on top, and he has his man beaten and just overthrown. Corey Barlow was close, but if Palmer had caught it, I don't know if he could have gotten him or not. I think Jay Parker needed just to get a little bit more air under the football and get a little bit more aloft there to let David Palmer run under because David Palmer did get behind Corey Barlow. A little pump fake and a little quick hitch uh, caught Corey Barlow, and David Palmer ran by him. Parker is 3 of 7 for 89 yards. Keep in mind, one of those pass plays was 68. Lee at the 45, breaks a tackle, and he'll take it across midfield. 14 yards on the pass play. on the route. The outside receiver just runs a stop route. Comes back to the football. Extends real high to make a catch. And Corey Barlow misses the tackle and it slips down. Going up top again. A flag has been thrown. This one is over on the other side of the field. In fact, there are two flags. I'd say it looks to me like they got 12 guys on on the One, field two, again. Three, four, five, six, There's seven, 12 eight, nine, people 10, 11, on the 12. field. You're right. Illegal They're participation. They're caught again for 12 men on the field. Wow. There's 12 right now. Here comes 32 off the field. The thing to watch. Illegal participation against the defense. Just in the Big penalty, but here you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve men on the field. You might say, how's that happen? Somebody just doesn't come off the field, but the free safety should be able to see that. What? Watch how many people, when they come off the field, also avoid that gentleman right now. If they have to get back to the bench by way of mobile, they don't want to be close to it. The more important thing is the coach better dodge Parker breaks out of it. Somehow... And now here comes a flag. It's going to be a face mask against Auburn. Auburn with two very big penalties here late. You could see the hand come in and grab his face mask. Okay, Jay Barker with another good job of escaping the rush. Face mask, defense, five yards. He's 
got to hand it to Alabama because they haven't sat on the lead. They really tried to come out and make something happen in this last two minutes and three seconds. Now Auburn must shut them down to a field goal. 104. Now the clock has been whistled back in. We have under one minute to play until halftime. Alabama has one timeout left. Caught by Lee at the 10-yard line. Hey, what's happening now? Jay Barker's starting to feel his oats. He's starting to feel confidence now. He's throwing the ball well. He's a little high when he's thrown from the middle of the field to the hash, but he's still getting the completion. And they have their one timeout with 30 seconds, 20 seconds. He might just kill it right here. They throw the ball down. And they're going to run a play. Brown pleads his case. He caught it, but the official right there says, you caught it out of bounds. I tell you, he made a great catch to control that football. Jay Barker, just a little fade route in the corner. Watch him go up and make this catch. And then come down out of bounds. Of course, he was hit out of bounds, but Freddie Smith pushed out of bounds. Try it again. Looking for Palmer this time. Incomplete. They tried the same play. They went to the other side with David Palmer. Looked like a little bump over there by Corey Barlow, but not called. hit on his first one of the afternoon. That was 38 yards. This time, he's got a pretty difficult angle. This is an attempt of 27. No good. Off to the right. We'll get one more look at it. Alabama drove the ball extremely well and then comes away with nothing. Looks like he got under it too far. Just didn't get enough on it and off to the right side. You see Matt Weddington, number four, and his reaction. A life on place kicker. Four seconds until the intermission. Alabama, 10-3. Another penalty called in front of the Alabama bench. I'm not so sure this is not going to be on the coaching staff. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Vincent team. You can see the field goals last year in 1990. Phil Doyle, 80% kicker, very steady. Move the goalpost in. Problems that Matt Weddington and Ham Green are having, 55%. Now you get it with four seconds to go. 15-yard penalty on the Alabama bench. Not a bad penalty if, if nothing happens right here when they throw a long completion because you get the officials here. And Gene Stallings is still after the official over on that Gene, side. Gene even walked out on the field and picked up the flag, folded it. <laughs> oh, he's still after him now. He's going to make sure now that he knows that. Uh, and you know what? He's complaining about the bump in the corner that he felt like was pass interference on David Palmer. And that's, he's still arguing a play three plays ago, but he knows he's going to go in the locker room here in a second, four seconds, and uh, he might as well get a say right now. But now this gives Auburn a chance with four seconds to go to air one out. Now, if you're an Alabama defensive back, the pass interference rule kind of enters here. If you're beat, then you shouldn't be beaten in this situation. Tack him, take the penalty, take the 15-yard penalty, which I don't like. I'd like to see him go back to the way we had it when they had the same rule as the pros. I, I agree like with that. you. I'm an offense. I, I like I the offense. Advantage. Don't take me back to the line of scrimmage. Big but, play. But and I, I'll, all right, I'll meet you halfway. Let's make them close the hands for blocking and put that the pass interference penalty back in. Well, if you take the big play, big game, Florida State, Miami, there was a big penalty yeah. there yes. where Miami had, had the interference near the end zone and uh, only gave up the, the penalty instead of the ball where it was the uh, pass interference call. It really could hurt you.
intercepted by George Teague after the tip. There's the man that scored the touchdown for Alabama. As you look at Pat Dye as he trots to the locker room, it's halftime here at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. With our score, the Crimson Tide 10 and the Auburn Tigers 3. At Legion Field, there's our score at halftime, 10 to 3 with the Alabama Crimson Tide on top. And Mike Gottfried, uh, just what we talked about off the top of the telecast, I don't think either one of us surprised. It is a game of field position. It's a field position football game. It's a game where the offensive coaches are turning it over to the kicking game and defensive football. The big play in the game so far was the pass from Jay Barker. Watching the back set up the throw. He's looking to the right side, his two-receiver side, but he comes off to Kevin Turner. Kevin Turner blocked and then just released late. Now this is the big play that really changed the field position. 68 yards that set up the next play. There's the tackle. Now here's the play where they moved David Palmer in the quarterback, the wide receiver who used to be a quarterback in high school. Rolls to the right, gets a key block by Saran Stacy, number 27, and gets in the end zone for the touchdown. Two big plays for Alabama. Boy, are they ever. Palmer got uh, sneaked into the ball game, so to speak, at quarterback. And Mike, when you look at total yardage in the first half, for the Alabama Crimson Tide, you take away that pass to Turner of 68 yards, and Alabama only has 80 total yards for the first half. Big plays, just, it's just so hard to defend. Now Auburn gets the ball first in the third quarter. This will be a very important drive in the third quarter. First drive. Pooch kick, this is gonna come down short. That's 25, Otis Mount. Let's take a look at those stats in the first half and here are the numbers I was talking about I think the key stats here are the two penalties of 15 yard for illegal participation 12 men on the field they have six penalties Auburn 60 yards it really hurt him but the big thing is the three turnovers that they have Alabama just has one turnover Stan White comes trotting back out on him. four of seven one interception 89 yards for him in the first 30 minutes of play Joe Frazier. Boy, not only is there nothing there, he gets belted down for a loss by Odin. And we were about to give him the numbers on Odin. That gives him, Mike, 12 tackles on the ball game, 10 solo. His career high is 13 against Georgia last year. Well, he's playing solid. He's just made so many plays. But so far for Auburn, there hasn't been any misdirection. There hasn't been any reverses. There hasn't been any counter plays. Everything has been a flow-type play where the linebacker like Derek Golden can just sit on the play, and as soon as he sees the backfield action, try to run through and make the play, and he's been successful doing it. Again, the Tigers with two tight ends in the ballgame. And Stan White wants to call a timeout. 14-10 left in the third quarter. Well, we've only played 50 seconds of the second half, and Stan White did not like what he saw. Or there was confusion on the part of his offense, and so he called a timeout already. Looks for his tight end, has Baxter. Down at the 40-yard line, and I can tell you right now, if Baxter's not a great athlete, that's an incomplete pass. He threw that again very high. Well, he's 6'4", and he has a good leaping ability. They went to two tight ends. Watch Fred Baxter come off the ball. Caught him in two deep coverage, and they have Fred Baxter coming down the middle. Here's the catch. He stretches out and makes the catch. Casey Harris, from number one, makes the tackle. It's an important drive. I keep talking about it, but the opening drive in the third quarter for Auburn, I believe, is the key. Three catches for 81 yards for Fred Baxter, the junior from Brundage, Alabama. Joe Frazier, nothing there, and he's going to be knocked down for a loss. This time it's Curry. Bad choice by Joe Frazier. There was nothing at the point of attack, and he tried to make something happen and bend it back to the backside. But Eric Curry, number 80, was just waiting for him. The, the defensive front of Alabama is controlling the defensive front. It's very difficult to uh, 
to run against this defense without a good mix of pass. Caught by McMillan. He will be tackled at the 35, and now it is third down Auburn, and they need the 31. Defensively, Derek Odin, he has just tied his career high in tackles. It gives him 13. That play is what Auburn was trying to do all year on offense. Get five receivers out. They were able to get their fullback out on just a little five to six yard stop route. Threw the ball to him. Derek Odin again, 56, makes the tackle. Change in philosophy as well for Auburn. That's the first time they've thrown to a running back, a completed one to a running back in the ball game. Here comes Alabama, and it is caught by Casey. Herbert Casey, and now here comes a late flag. Alabama blitzed. Stan White picked up the blitz. Got the ball to Herbert Casey, but maybe a pick call. That might be what they try to get him on here to call. I didn't see the clip. Here you're going to see the pressure by Alabama. Bringing both inside linebackers. Stan White stands tall in there. He's able to throw the ball to Herbert Casey for the completion. You'll see it behind the quarterback. Picked up the blitz. Pretty good to linebacker. Let's see if it, there's the clip. Came from a wide receiver. Came right behind. Alabama has to come sprinting back following the penalty to line up defensively, and Auburn didn't go ahead and run the play. Late flag. Short of the first down by one. Now let's see, there's a flag thrown back at the 50-yard line. Well, it was thrown on number 21, either Alex Smith, number 21, or Derek Olden, number 56, because they get tangled up. They're going to make the call on Alex Smith, number 21, against Derek Olden, number 56. Watch the back, 21, on the block. And you see his left hand because his hand came underneath. That's it's tight. But that was the call. That's why the penalties have just killed Auburn. Eight penalties, 82 yards. I didn't see the one of those, quite frankly. That was McMillan that he wanted on third down. Odin is the man who had the cover. Well, with the help of the penalties, they were able to stop that drive. Now David Palmer goes deep again as a punt returner. Well, George has got a little uh, redemption for himself coming up here. His last kick, only 29 yards. And he does. Good high coverage kick. Palmer from the 17. And here's a surprise. There is another flag down on the field. the thrifty car rental bowl beginning with the liberty bowl december the 29th air force versus mississippi state in the thrifty car rental holiday bowl on december the 30th iowa against byu in the peach bowl east carolina versus nc state be sure and be with us for all the action that's the liberty bowl the holiday bowl and the peach bowl The 
the situation for Alabama is they are back in the part of the bowl area where there are the majority of the Auburn fans, and they're trying to make it hard to hear. Stacy gets by Wilson, but he will not get by number six, Fred Smith. Oh, does he tag him? Fred Smith with a high tackle on Saran Stacy. Here's a toss sweep into the short side of the field, which Alabama had a lot of success against Tennessee in the second half, going into the short side of the field. But Fred Smith, number six, says we're not going to have any of that. Stacy got two. It will be second down and eight. He is barely averaging over one per carry. Darrell Crawford this time defensively, and he will corral Stacy. Going to be third down, Alabama, in about five. Both teams are firing linebackers. Watch 56, Darrell Crawford. Shoot the gap. There's the missed block. Now he's in the backfield to make the play on Frank Stacy. That's why the play action pass works so well against the linebackers, is because on run fakes, they are they're coming right now. Both teams' linebackers just sell out. Ball is loose. Barker gets back on it at the five-yard line. Ricky Sutton almost made the biggest play of the game for Auburn. Four times. The Tigers have sacked Bama quarterbacks. Well, it will, this Auburn crowd now has become a factor. Thomas Bailey's a very, very tough return man for Auburn. Gives you the same thing David Palmer gives Alabama. Tank Williamson. Oh, he gets a beauty. Good heaven. All the way over Bailey's head and now takes a big Alabama bounce. Back to the 23. Put a star by Tank Williamson's name. 71 yards on the punt. 10 on the return. position. You never expect a 71-yard punt. That's what just happened. Looking for Baxter up the near sideline, and he's got it. Here. Let reach down, make that catch. Victor Hall. Fred Baxter makes the catch. Victor Hall open down the middle. Big Fred just went right through Teague. Otis now. Not much there, and I'll tell you, in the running game, Alabama has done an awfully good job of silencing that. And there are five reasons. Copeland, Sullen, Stewart, Odin, and Curry. I felt today that Stan White would go to his tight end. You see five receptions for 139 yards. The receivers have only caught one pass. The reason, again, has been the good play action by Stan White to hold the backers to get the ball to his tight ends. Sullins, back from being shaken up in the first half, steps right up into the hole and says this running play is not going anywhere with Otis Mounds. Alabama makes it tough on you down here to run the ball in the end zone. This defense has been tested all year. You have to throw the football in against this defense. 10-3. Alabama leads. Clock is about to go under seven and a half minutes left in the third. The problem when you get the third long, they bring their extra DBs in the game and they have them in now. Here they come with the blitz. Over the middle to the tight end, and Overton wants the flag.
Ron, I'm not so sure he shouldn't have got the flag. Antonio Langham, number 43, was covering. And Dale Overton had him covered tight for the incompletion. 44-yard attempt by Von Weil. He yanked it. been sacked four times for a loss of 21 by the Auburn defense. This is that play that they tried to start the game with the shovel pass and Crawford will ride him down from behind. is going to try to run again the misdirection pass and get Jay Barker outside but there's going to be pressure from the outside from Auburn on defense there's the fake and a toss watch of pressure come up inside now the sack on Jay Barker uh, misdirection trying to slow down the linebackers we knew they were going to try to run that they opened the game with it and now they they tried to open the this sequence in the third quarter over to think, think they may put that one away for a while Barker will scramble. Boy, does he take a hit. He'll pick up a couple of yards, but that's it. That's Pierce and Crawford who combined on him. Jay Barker took over the quarterback job for Danny Woodson, who was suspended. Danny Woodson was the starter, but Jay Barker now has moved into the starting position. See this huge throng of people in attendance here at Legion Field for this meeting between the Crimson Tide and the Tigers. Third down. Palmer, and he gets by him. Big play by Fred Smith, though, not to make sure that he didn't go in that end zone. He really did a good job to try to keep David Palmer into the sideline. Watch David Palmer on the out route. Now, the reason he's so open, it's man coverage. Corey Barlow is going to come into your picture. Just too big a cushion. But the defensive job is Fred Smith. He's using the sideline and does not allow David Palmer to break it all the way. That's 46 yards. That other pass play that came in the first half was 68. So that's 144 yards or 114 yards on two pass plays by Alabama tonight. That was Fred Smith who came up to hit Derek Lassick. Fred Smith has had some great individual hits tonight. Oh, he has, and I'll tell you, that play, if they can hold him down here, that play he made on David Palmer, not to allow him to break that pass for a touchdown will loom big in this affair. You know, when you look at David Palmer, he was playing high school football last year for right here in Birmingham for Jackson Olin High School. Mr. Football in the state gained over 2,000 yards rushing, 1,000 yards passing as a quarterback and receiver. Saran Stasius back in the ball game gets the pitch 92 Ricky Sutton you can see him at the bottom of the stack the junior from Tucker Georgia we'll go back to David Palmer again to talk about what he's reminded to here that pass play of course he sneaks in and runs the pad to play for the only touchdown in this game and you talk about recruiting that was a player who was playing high school ball Where's number two? The Alabama band uh, referred to him as Deuce. Deuce on the loose. Twenty-five second clock is down to four. Down to three. They're going to have to burn a timeout. So Alabama now with only two timeouts left in the second half. They lead it ten to three. But they had a drive where they moved it extremely well in the first half, just before halftime. Missed the field goal, so they came away dry. But don't forget, there's plenty of football still to come tonight as number one ranked Miami takes on the explosive San Diego State Aztecs from Miami's Orange Bowl. And then following that one, 18th ranked Notre Dame travels to Honolulu to take on the University of Hawaii. All of that tonight. 
right here on ESPN. Another key in this game for Alabama to this point has been Jay Barker's ability to avoid the sack and make yardage running the football and just, just extending the time long enough to throw the football. The situation is a third down and just over five for Alabama. The line of scrimmage just outside the 26. And in fact, during the timeout, Palmer had gone to the sidelines. Now they have elected to bring him back on the field along with 37, Kevin Lee. David Palmer against Corey Barlow at the top of the screen, number 12. Auburn showed blitz, then they stayed at home, and that pass out of the stadium. See, Auburn did a nice defensive move. They rolled Corey Barlow up. They figured that they'd show him a one-on-one. -on -one. Then when the ball was snapped, they rolled Corey Barlow up and took... Clarence Morton over the top, number 13, so they double David Palmer in that key situation. Matt Weathington is one of two tonight. Hit from 38, missed the one just before halftime. This attempt from 39 yards. He got it. Three fifty-nine left in the third quarter, and the Crimson Tide faithful are loving it. is a longtime sports writer here in Birmingham, and he talked with us about the first time that Pat Dye defeated Paul Bear Bryant. Bryant was a father figure to Pat, and uh, it was just like beating your daddy. You beat him fair and square, and uh, you knew your daddy respected you, and you felt so proud of yourself for beating him. I had the pleasure of having dinner with Alf last night, and you want to sit and visit with a guy who was like an encyclopedia on football in Alabama at both Auburn and at the University of Alabama. It really was a lot of fun to hear some old stories going back in the years in this rivalry. Very nice gentlemen. 13 to 3 our score. Steve Cole will kick it off. You see the back of Alex Smith and also number 18 Thomas Bailey. But Otis Mounds will get the pooch kick, and he falls down at the 26. <laughs> Vera, Bryant, yeah, Vera Bryant had a great effect on the coaching profession. You look at Alabama, those are people who are associated with the Bear. Gene Stallings, Mike DeBose, the defensive line coach. Jim Fuller is the offensive coach. Amos Jones the, uh, do, works with the special teams, Mal Moore offense, Bill Oliver and Jeff Rousey, the defensive coaches. Joe Frazier gets absolutely nothing. Now that was a play that Florida used earlier this year in a game we televised to great success against Alabama in the second half. It was a very tight game. Well, that's what, what happens when you exchange tapes, and I'm sure Auburn and Alabama, when they play, they exchange every game tape. And you just go back and look for little things that may have given them some problems early in the year that didn't give them a problem on that play. 14 carries for 40 yards for Frazier. Short drop, that ball is tipped, and it's caught by Casey. McMillan came over and knocked him down. In the last two plays, Alabama has jumped their strong safety up late. Stacey Harrison, number one, and, and showing Stan White an eight-man front. There's the tip. Good concentration by Herbert Casey just to bring that one in. But now with the lead at 10 points, now Alabama plays a little bit different on defense. Look for him to go after Stan White. They can gamble a little more.
Red backs to the tight end. To the 32-yard line. Did not pick up the first down as Langham came up from the secondary, and Auburn will have to kick the football away. for an average of 39 yards for George tonight. And into the wind, that one will not turn over. As Palmer calls for the fair catch at the 36. And let's go back to Adrian Karsten for another update. Adrian. Well, Ron, as a player, I always remember that coaches like Godfrey would always say, you will play the way you practice. Well, I think the reason Alabama's playing so well tonight with such great intensity is because of the way they practice. And the way they practice is their first team against their first team, something not a lot of colleges do. The result is their 44th postseason invitation to a bowl more than any team in NCAA history. Well, you're right, Adrian. You don't really like that ones against ones, but sometimes it's good and it brings up the, the practice level a lot. Well, they faked this reverse a while ago. This time they hand it off and Palmer is open. Corey Barlow will stop him, but it's a gain of 32. Well, little did people realize last year during the recruiting season when David Palmer inked that scholarship, he was going to be such a big player in this ball game. So much speed. There's the toss sweep, and Stacy again draws a crowd. There's the handoff to David Palmer. Now watch the speed. Watch him pull away. Good blocking. Corey Barlow, number 12, again tries to trap him into the boundary just because of his speed. Toby Shields with a very good block. The sophomore out of Fairhope, Alabama, the offensive center. And the Auburn Tigers have a player shaken up. That's James Willis back at the 32-yard line. So Palmer has been devastating here on a couple of plays in this ball game to keep the Auburn defense totally off balance. The cat nine knows with 150 left in the third quarter that he can ill afford to give up a touchdown. In fact, uh, they really don't need to give up a field goal for that matter. Not the way Alabama's playing on defense. Too strong on defense, Ron. You know, we, when we talked to Pat Dye yesterday, he says, you know, you just can't judge what the off the field has done to his team and, uh, and himself. He just said he was thankful he was playing Alabama because he thought that they would rise to the occasion. But so much concentration and focus just taken away with the off the field uh, problems that Pat Dye has had to deal with. Well, hopefully Willis will be back. He came off the field under his own power. He has five tackles and one sack in the game tonight for Auburn. Pitts comes back into the short side, and that's Stacy. It's Rand Stacy at around the 27-yard line. Randy Hart finally put the stop on him, but this is what Alabama would love to do, and that's just run, 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 and let that clock wear on down. Well, this is what they like to do, and then go back to the Tennessee game again. In the second half, they pounded into the short side of the field. They put the tight end in the formation in the short side of the field. Here you see Daryl Crawford, which would be a big loss for Auburn, who was injured. Daryl Crawford's right leg it appeared that's what he was favoring. Pelton came in the game replacing him, and Stacy's going to throw. Covered in the end zone, tipped away, and Barlow with the interception. Stacy through that football with very good coverage by Barlow, and that is a possession that Alabama should have come away with something better than that. Well, you know, David Palmer, I don't care what the situation is, he's going to draw somebody. Corey Barlow's been burned a couple times by David Palmer. And Corey Barlow's going to stay right with David Palmer. No one's going to take that fake on uh, Grant Stacy on that. Pretty good defense right here. Corey Barlow just goes up and makes the interception on the halfback pass. intercepted at the 35 yard line George T cut in front 
Herbert Casey was coming back trying to help his quarterback, but Teague made that good a play. Well, the play was open over the middle. But Stan White couldn't get it off, so he started to roll out, and that gave George Teague a chance to jump the route. Jump Herbert Casey. Mike, he's not throwing with the same kind of confidence he did last year. Last year, when we had early ball games with Auburn, he would rear back and just rip that thing. Success breeds success. When you don't have success, now it chips away at your confidence level. Now he's kind of feathering it, like he's afraid to let it go. Teapot Brown. And Stacy Harrison has to come up and make the stop. It's going to be a gain of 16 yards. Teapot Brown, number 26. It's a draw play. Watch number 26, the right back, the shuffle over. There's the blocking up front, and then he breaks into the secondary. George Teague has a shot at him. The usually reliable tackler misses him. Number one, Stacy Harrison with the tackle. They have to throw the football. The football, throwing the football is the only way they're going to beat Alabama. Teapot Brown from Dothan, Alabama. Caught at the 47-yard line. Now, Victor Hall, the tight end, went up thinking he was throwing it for him. Dale Overton came away with the football. Well, Victor, 6-3, he was the underneath the receiver, but Stan White had the ball thrown over his head to Dale Overton. Here's a rollout to try to get away from the pressure of the inside blitz, and then you see George Stewart coming late. There's the ball just over the outstretched hands of the tight end to Dale Overton. Well, Auburn's had their problems when they get inside the 30-yard line, but then they try to run the football, and Alabama's just been too difficult to get up yardage on the ground. All right. He goes straight ahead with the fullback this time, and Richardson will take it to the 44. John Copeland will come up first. And three seconds down to two, we are about to head to the final 15 minutes of this one. A timeout on the field at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, 13-3. Second down, I would uh, I would be certain, but the down marker shows third. Up on the scoreboard, it shows second. We both think it's second. Well, right? there's no doubt it's second down. He's on standing on the Alabama side. Uh, and I assume that's what the, the conference is that's going on down on the field. Now Pat Dye is walking out on the field. And I guess what they have to do, or what they can do, is to contact the official scorer up in the press box and get them to look at a play-by-play -play that is kept. Every play is typed out. And go back and look and see what the last play was. The play-by-play -play typist has just said second down. Good work. Mr. Lindblad, the Big E. Well, the scoreboard says second down. Yeah. So the scoreboard says second down. Down marker says third down. Pat Dye says second down. Gene Stallings is walking the sideline. He told us how important the game this was. He said they'll be talking about this game in the state of Alabama on July 4th. October 15th, December 28th. He said they talk about it all the time. What he's doing right there, it's a, a walkie-talkie, and he is talking to the person that we just found out and said that it shows second down. And the officials trying to do the right thing and make sure that they are right on top of it. This is a play-action pass down, second and five. Let's flip that over. There we go. There we go. Robert Stewart came unattended, and Mounds has dropped for a loss of five, and all of a sudden, what looked as though could be a prosperous situation for Auburn 
And they're going to scrimmage, uh, scrimmage with a third down, and they need the 38. Well, Robert Stewart, he's just so tough for a center to handle. Watch him right up over the center. Come off the block and just make the play. And usually when that happens, you'd like to have the tailback cut behind him, but just he did not have the opportunity. Robert Stewart was up in the backfield too quick. Robert Casey dropped the football, hit him right in the hands. Stan White with a nice delivery. Looked like he pushed it a little bit, but the ball was thrown right to Herbert Casey. Off the shotgun, they want to give him a little more vision of the field, a little more time to throw. You see the push right on the mark. Just dropped by number 20, Herbert Casey. Wide open. He had some running room after if, if he would have made that reception. Yeah, he did. David Palmer is back of a single safety if George prepares to kick. Three kicks for him tonight and an average of just over 33. Great high coverage kick. Going to be a little too far into the end zone. 14.05. Left to play in this one. Alabama by 10. Completely. Mike, the second down play with the really goes right back to what you were saying as far as Auburn getting caught with the running play against the Alabama defense. They're going to have to throw the football to win this game. They just have to continue to throw. Palmer with the carry, and that time Auburn corrals him. Let's go to Adrian Preston for an update. Adrian. Ron, you're looking at middle linebacker Daryl Crawford, who has suffered a hyperextension of his right knee. Whether he comes back to play or not is a decision of the training staff here on the Auburn side. If he can't play, that would be a huge loss to this team because he has totaled 38 tackles against Alabama in the last three years. Moments ago, he was up with tears in his eyes saying, I gotta play, I gotta play. That's how much this game means to him. Meanwhile, on the field, that's number 62, William Barger, who was a sophomore from right here in Birmingham. He's done a very good job for the Crimson Tide this year, was a left guard, and they switched him over to the right side in, in making some changes on the offensive front. And he is in pain and down at the 25-yard line. Well, they don't have a lot of depth in the offensive line. Mike Solari and Jim Fuller, they have two offensive line coaches at Alabama. And they, uh, I talked to Mike Solari before the game. He said, leaving John Stevenson at home hurts us a little bit depth-wise. This injury will chip in there also. Mike, don't forget ESPN's Davis Cup coverage continues tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. with two singles matches between the United States and France. France, by the way, leads the final two games, or leads two uh, to one. Now, tomorrow's matches are, first of all, Andre Agassi versus Henri Lecomte. Then it's Pete Sampras going up against Guy Forget. The competition is hanging in the balance tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. Right here on ESPN. Guy Forget would probably be a wide receiver if he was a football player. You think Forget? Forget. Either that or a right winger from Montreal. Pass in the flat, overthrown. 6 of 14 now for Barker, 152 yards. Yeah, Jay Barker's oh, played well back. tonight. Yeah, it's this afternoon. Uh, I just, the, watching him, he's done a nice job. For the first time this year against Florida, he was having some shoulder problems. They didn't want to have to play him at all, and he really has only played in a couple of games as you look at Crawford. And the decision does not look good on him right now. Flag is down. Stacy is the man he wanted, and okay, Barker really got unloaded on at the 15-yard line. It's a third down play. Holding, offense, the flag, fourth down. Another comes a time in the game where you have to make something happen. It's time for Auburn. You know, one of the biggest plays of the game was made by this guy uh, just earlier. You're exactly right because he got off a great kick. Thomas Bailey's capable as a return man. He's capable of the big play. This kick, semi off the side of his foot. 
Bailey at the 41 yard line. Very good field position for Auburn, but I'll tell you, Alabama with excellent coverage. That's 45 yards on the kick, seven on the return, and Steve Buskey, reserve tight end, comes over to make the tackle. Storyline in this one so far. Auburn, 12 drives. They have one field goal to show for it. Palmer, 87 total yards, one touchdown, and sacks. Auburn six times, Alabama only once. If you're going to throw the football against Alabama, you better throw it on first down, second and short. Don't wait till second and third and long because they bring in those extra DBs in the 4 2 front and they get good pressure because they have such outstanding defensive linemen. It looks like Alabama may try to cross them up and come pressure. Nope, they stay at home. And the pass is caught by Hall. And again, the tight ends continue to riddle the Alabama defense. Just when we talked about Alabama jumped into an eight-man front on defense. Here's number one. He's man for man on the tight end. Stan White's going to go back, search him out, find Victor Hall. Number one, Stacey Harrison's running with him. He just gets separated and a big pass reception by Victor Hall. They went to the eight-man front to help him against the run, and Auburn came out through the ball in a successful pass play. Frazier, huge opening, has five, has ten, inside the five, and his first and goal, Auburn. Twenty yards on the carry. Joe Frazier just ripped it off, but you talk about a great hole. Now, they double team again. There's the block back. Good block, and Joe Frazier finds the seam, busts through the block of George Teague, and takes it all the way down to the one and a half yard line. It was Shade who saved the touchdown. Pat Dye's got to be thinking on the sideline. What else can go wrong? Stan White didn't get stepped on, bumped into anything. He just dropped the football. Dropped the ball. Looked like he was going to turn around the pitch and just dropped it out of his hands. But that's one play you just got to put behind you. If you're the quarterback, Stan White just didn't come up clear to it. But he's lucky he just recovered it, put it behind you now. Joe Frazier looks to me like he wants that football. Sullins and Robert Stewart are there to stop the play. It will be third down for the Auburn Tigers. They're tough enough against the run, but when you come into a tight formation, you bring them all in there with you. Robert Stewart and John Sullins, just so tough on the run. Two snaps. Auburn has gone backwards. Three and a half, almost four yards. As I said before, this is time. They have to make it happen right here. A little late getting the tight end in Victor Hall, 87. Throw it in. Pass is lofted, tipped, and Teague knocked it away. Langham also was there covering. It's fourth down. frustration for Auburn. They were looking for a pass interference call, but they think it was good defense. Fred Baxter against George Teague in the corner. Tight end on the fade. They went a little more height to go to. Six foot four frame. Von Weil knocks the 22 yarder home. 10.50 left to play in our new score. Alabama 13 and Auburn 6. Birmingham, Alabama, 10-50 left in this one. Tim Von Wild has just hit on a 22-yard field goal attempt. But the difference in this one so far is you look at Palmer. Boy, that first down, fumbled snap from center. You're kind of looking from a higher altitude from the one, but they got knocked back and lost four yards in the play. Harris, one of the upbacks, takes it out to the 30-yard line. Let's go to Tim Brando for an update. Tim. Ron, they don't come much bigger in Louisiana than the Bayou Classic. Watch this. Nate Harrison of Southern with a pump fake and 70 yards to Brian Thomas to tie it. The extra point would win it. Gerald Kimball needed the victory the Southern head coach to hold on to his job, beating the legend, Eddie Robinson, by one. 
Our score, 13 to 6. Still lots of time left in this one. That pass is thrown complete to Curtis Brown. Now, I have a question for you, Mike. That pass is complete out to the 40. Alabama had two backs up, moving and looking around, and there's no flag because they were still not sure about the play or the count. Somebody. Tell you what happened. Auburn jumped into an eight-man front. Jay Barker had the presence in mind to check off and throw the route to Curtis Brown, the one-on-one -on -one route. He knew he couldn't get anything if he tries to run the football against that front, so he checked off to the pass play. Good heady move by the young quarterback. Yes, it was. Derek Lassick. He's loose in the secondary again, and that'll be an Alabama first down out to the 48. Fred Smith finally stops him, but it's a gain of 10. Alabama has the uh, two running backs that they like to use for Ann Stacy, and then bring Derek Lassick in. He can run the football. He's fresh. He comes into the ball game and spells Ann Stacy and uh, picks up the yard. Stacy back in the game. Pitch goes to Stacy. Gets a block. It'll be a gain of 11 to the 41-yard line of Auburn. This has been typical of Alabama's season the whole year. They, they played in ball games that have been close games. Their defense has carried them, but their offense always seems to make good drives in the fourth quarter and on the ground. 11 carries for 27 yards for Saran Stacy. Now those numbers are not nearly as good as he is accustomed to, but a very big run right there. Stacy again. You could see number 50, Mike Pelton coming into the fray, along with Richard Shea. Pelton replacing the injured Daryl Crawford. What Auburn's counting on doing is they're counting on trying to confuse the young quarterback, Jay Barker, but I don't think he has really responded, and he's looked over the defense. Mal Moore has him coached up today to read the defense and read what's there. Stacy. Fred Smith has to finally make the stop, and all of a sudden, Saran Stacy, who was held in check in the first half with a couple of back-to-back -back huge runs, and Alabama with a first down at the Auburn 23. All of a sudden, 13 carries for 50 yards for Stacy. Looks like a sweep, but he's able to cut it back because there's nowhere to go. Look at those cuts. There's the cut on Fred Smith, who eventually makes the tackle. Trying to answer that field goal round that Auburn just scored. Stacy, guess who comes up to hit him? Fred Smith, pound for pound, is the biggest hitter on the field. Adrian Karsten has an update for us. Adrian? Well, Ron and Mike, keep your eye on Alabama offensive right guard, Mark Barber, uh, he, or Barger, rather. He's got his right hamstring that was pulled. He sat down on the bench, train says he can't go in back, in, back in and play. He said, forget it, I'm going back in. He's one of four hometown boys here from Birmingham playing here tonight, and that's why they call this the Iron Bowl, playing with little hurts. Chris Anderson, number 33, has checked in along with Houston. Anderson gets the carry. And he weaves his way into the grasp of Pelton. But again, that's going to be a gain of close to five. And it's not just line surge. It's some really good running by Alabama running backs. Well, it is. I, it is. They have depth. And when you add to the fact that, really, David Palmer's like a running back, they put a lot of pressure on the defense with the running game. Eighth play of the drive. Fred Smith has to come up and tackle Anderson. Martin Houston was the man that threw the block that paved the way. And Chris Anderson just looks so fresh coming off the ball. Now Sran Stacy back in the game. Tailbacks, we've seen Stacy, then Lassick, and now Anderson. Here's Watch what Mike's talking here's about. Here's the pitch to Chris Anderson. Watch, he's got fresh feet now. He's fresh in the ball game. He just picks it up. But where Alabama's winning this football game right now is the offensive line. You can see Houston with that block on Cunningham. Cunningham 
comes over to make the stop for Auburn on this play on Stacy. When you continue to run the football, do not get out of bounds. No stopping the clock. All of a sudden, Mike, we've just gone under seven minutes in this ball game. This is a fast-moving football game. Just Auburn defensive line right now. The Alabama offensive line is handling them. Stacy corralled for a moment. I don't know how he got back to the line of scrimmage, quite frankly, because he was covered in blue. Barlow and Shea came up to combine on the stop. And now it's a third down situation, and they need about eight yards for the first. In this game, the way it's been moving along, I'm not, they, they've shown a lot of confidence in Jay Barker. They've let him throw the football in, in key situations when they've been backed up. But you have to think, they have to be thinking a little bit here. We want a safe play right here because we, we want that field goal because that field goal puts us out of range of one score. Look for the ball to be put in the tailback's hands. Looking for Palmer. Can't hold on. Corey Barlow had the cover on him. And that means... Matt Wethington again. They went to their speedy receiver, David Palmer. They saw the eight-man front again. They knew they had man coverage with Corey Barlow on the outside. David Palmer breaks the out route. He's there. Jay Barker can't throw it any better than that. Good call by Mal Moore and uh, just a drop, uh, drop pass. 28-yard field goal attempt. Shown a lot of confidence in Jay Barker. I'll tell you, I, I'm impressed. Ricky Sutton with the block. Mike with 5.38 left to play. How big is that? A seven-point game. Keeps you within striking distance, and that now the Auburn offense has the chore ahead of them. Take that ball in the 10-yard line against this great Alabama defense. Roosevelt Patterson is the injured player for Alabama. Now keep in mind, the man that he is replacing, John Stevenson, was suspended by his head coach. And Mike mentioned they don't have much reserve. Watch this field goal attempt. Watch the second man in beat the block of the wing back. Now, when you're the wing back, you never allow somebody to come from inside. Let's look at it one more time. You, number 87, you don't want the man to beat you inside and that's exactly where ricky sutton number 92 came from you always want to protect the inside let the outside man come free you want the technique let's look at that one more time if we could the technique that you'd like to use with a wing back is a little technique where he's going to bump the inside the inside man then go out and get the outside but see he went a little too soon and he got outside and that allowed ricky sutton to come inside and block the kick His ball club down 13 to 6. Five minutes, 38 seconds left to play. You get 90 yards to go, but there's a lot of time. The good news is you block the field goal and you stand striking distance. The bad news is you're looking at that Alabama defense and 90 yards <laughs> ahead of you. <laughs> but that's what makes this game special and the rivalry special. The opportunity is there. on the comeback at the 23-yard line. Defensively, it's Langham, and it's good for 13. Stan White is very slow in getting up. Auburn chose to ro roll Stan White. Stan White to the right side. Watch the pressure come in. Number one, Stacy Harrison, the strong safety, was up on the line of scrimmage. He came on first down, and they brought him on a stunt. Makes the hit just as he gets the ball away to Dale over to number four. Corey Lewis, a junior from Gallatin, Tennessee. Number two has come in, and you see them working on a laceration on Stan White's chin. 12 of 19, two interceptions, 226 yards. The number's on White tonight. Frazier will be hit and knocked down. 
<laughs> and it, it shows a new cadence, a new quarterback, how the entire rhythm of an offense can be thrown off with someone new coming in the ball game. Game's so important, and I'm not so sure this is worth taking the time out for. You're spending the time out to get your quarterback back in the game. See how out of sync that was? Just Lewis took the snap, and nobody else was really moving. Obviously, he was a little bit quicker with his cadence count. Zips a pass, tipped away. That's a nice work. Good heavens. Derek Oden again. Boy, he's been everywhere. Stan White comes back on. But what he's confronted with is a third down and 12. And Auburn needs the ball just across the 33-yard line to pick up the first down. Watch number 56, Derek Golden, read the eyes of the quarterback as he sets in, takes, takes no draw, just sits on the eyes and then breaks on the ball that was thrown. Flags down all over the place. Pass is complete, but we're going to have offensive holding. Good for 15 yards, but two flags came at the same time. One from the referee who's behind the offense and one from the umpire who's in front of it. I think it's uh, George Stewart... Robert Stewart, rather, was able to get penetration. It looked like the hold was on the Auburn line on Robert Stewart. Holding, offense, third down. Well, Robert Stewart just exploded on the snap of the ball. Was in the backfield, and they pulled him down to make sure he didn't get to Stan White. Gene Stallings knows that that may have been as... Big a break for Alabama as he has had tonight. Stan White's going to throw against about six defensive backs in there now. Eric Curry had him in the grasp. Pass was thrown incomplete, and he did have a legitimate receiver. There are some boos, but Alex Smith was in the neighborhood. Stan White's upset about something. With Eric Curry. Roll Stan White to the left. Here's the rollout. Let's see what happens after. There's Curry. Good presence of mind to get rid of the ball. Let's see what happened after to start the argument. George's punt, and this is a dandy. Palmer retreats to the 43. Break in the action, Alabama by seven. Limits, same results. We are back with 4-11 to play. Seven points, Alabama on top. Pat Dye's ball club blocked a field goal attempt just a moment ago, but they couldn't get things to work in their direction. A penalty and also an injury to their quarterback, Stan White, and now they got to make a quick stop of Alabama to try to get the football back if they want to get in this one. Stacy hit by Pelton. Also, Benny Pierce, a junior out of Valdosta, comes over to help out in the stop. Both teams have two timeouts remaining, Ron. So there's a lot of time with 3.53 on the clock. Mike Pelton, who replaced Darrell Crawford, made the tackle in the last play. He's been played steady since they lost Darrell Crawford to an injury. He really has. He's a freshman from Goshen, Alabama. Stacy hit by Cunningham. Then Pelton comes over to help stop him, and it's going to be a third down at about four. Do you call a timeout right now, or do you try to hold him? Barlow is looking to the bench, and they are going to call the timeout with 3.16 left on the clock. Watch Saran Stacy. When the nose guard gets up the field, he has the presence of mind to cut it back, and that's what you want out of a tailback when that happens. Watch the nose guard get up the field. Watch the cutback. Good cut by Saran Stacy. Good read, reading the defensive lineman. So Auburn has one timeout left. Three minutes, 16 seconds left to play, and the Crimson Tide leading by a touchdown and an extra point. 
Big third down for Alabama. They're all big in this game, but this one's a big one because they keep the football if they get the first down. And with only one timeout left, they can run a lot of clock. Adrian Carston, let's go back down to you and get an update. What do you have for us? Well, Ron, the tension and the emotion that I described prior to kickoff couldn't be felt any more than I feel on the Auburn side right now. The feeling over here, if they can beat Alabama, they salvage a 500 season. Forget the fact they're not going to a bowl for the first time in 10 years. They're going to beat Alabama. It's a team that's been through a lot, Ron. This whole year has been a year of uh, just tough times for this football team. Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to stop the Crimson Tide right here. And 27 has been a big task in this one today. Bootleg action, and what a great play by Shelley. He stayed at home and knocks him down for a loss. Oh, my goodness. Auburn with the eight-man front. Alabama tried to fake him out with the rollout, with the naked play with Jay Barker, but Auburn was on a blitz and uh, just played it perfectly. Alabama probably is going to wait. Still 10 seconds left on the 25-second clock, and they didn't. Bailey does not make the catch, and it goes out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Don't forget, there's still plenty of football to come here as number one ranked Miami takes on San Diego State. That's from the Orange Bowl, beginning at 7.30. Then following that one, 18th ranked Notre Dame is out in the islands to take on the Rainbow Warriors, University of Hawaii, and that action will be coming to you from Aloha Stadium at 10.30 tonight, Eastern Time. Residents in scoreboard show coming up next here on ESPN. Alabama is going to play this last drive with two minutes and 30 seconds to go in a four-man front, two linebackers, and five defensive backs are in the ball game right now for Alabama. Fred Baxter has five catches for 122 yards in this game. That's a career high for the tight end. Dale Overton. Melvin Hines, I beg your pardon, number 19. Here's what Stan White's going to look at now. The four defensive linemen. You see the four there. Here's the five defensive backs. There's the four, five DBs. And that's what he's going to look at every time he throws the football. Now you get some twist stunts up inside. A lot of movement. Alabama's going to give him a little yardage. On second and five. Over the middle, almost intercepted. And the man that he did not catch up with was Harrison, was coming from the side that he would be blinded on and almost made the pickoff. They're sitting Stacy Harrison and George Teague on the hashes. And they're reading the ball. When the ball's thrown, Stacy Harrison takes off and arrives at the right time, along with number 56, Gary Golden. Third down. 156 to play. Two of 13 on third down conversions is Auburn. White trying to run for his life and he won't get away. And now here comes a late flag. And that's going to be intentional grounding. See, I, I tell you what, I don't agree with that. And I, I'm telling you, he got the ball off. And then, well, he just waved it off. Oh, geez. He just not. waved it off. That would have been a terrible uh, miscue on the official's part. Good pressure by Alabama. John Copeland, number 94, Eric Curry, 80. But Stan White did get the ball off the receiver. See, you see the twist stunt, the two stunts, and John Copeland gets there. He's able to get the ball off. He thought he, you know, the thought he was, or the referee thought he was going to the lineman, but you see number four, Dale Overton, was out there. The ball just bounced. Fourth down. And might they have to take it across the 26th. To stay alive in this ball game. Ball is knocked down by Stacy Harrison. And the celebration for Alabama begins.
to convert. And the Crimson Tide takes it over at the 21-yard line, and they'll keep it on the ground. Auburn can stop the clock one more time. Mike, there are so many stars of the game. The one guy on offense is Palmer. He was such an impact, particularly in the second half. But when I look at the job at Harrison and Teague and Odin, also Stewart did, a lot of folks shared in this one. Alabama won this game just like their season. Nine and one coming into this ball game. They played close football games. They played strong on defense. Their offense played to their defense. A great coaching job by Gene Stallings and his staff. You have to commend them. Straight ahead with the running play, and now we have 54 and 53 seconds left. And I want to tell you something. Auburn gave a great effort today. And you have to be proud of the way they played if you're an Auburn fan because they played hard. They've had a season of distractions off the field. These players had nothing to do with. And yet they responded, they played hard, and they played four quarters here. So I think both teams have played the outstanding football. Next, the residents in the college football scoreboard. Delay of game against Alabama. And now 16 seconds left in this one. should be the last play of the ball game unless Auburn Auburn does use their final timeout so let's take a quick timeout with 11 seconds left we'll go away for a moment Alabama 13 to 6 Collins and his crew will come away with the big victory over their arch rivals the Auburn Tigers and in year after next the home game for Auburn will be back down on the plains Stacy will go down. Cunningham is the first man to hit him, and the crowd will start to count it off. Auburn's going to get one play on that fourth down play. What Alabama was trying to do is just pitch the ball to Strand Stacy, let him run for a while, but Auburn made the tackle. Stan White's going to get a chance to hang one up here. Change of possession. Prevent defense and see it. They have everybody back. Three man rush and everybody else guarding the goal line. They're back 50 and 55 yards. White delivers it. It is tipped and incomplete. And the Alabama Crimson Tide have defeated the Auburn Tigers. And Mike, my question to you is is this the last football game? that Pat Dye will be the head coach for the Auburn Tigers. Well, we talked about earlier the tapes and how uh, I think it's been poorly handled and poorly mismanaged by the local attorney here and the way he has uh, continued to slowly uh, hand out tapes during the year. Uh, I think there's a lot to, a lot of questions to be, to be asked and uh, only time will tell. Uh, Once again, the final score, Alabama 13, Auburn 6. Stay tuned for the residents in college football scoreboard, which follows next. Now for Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten, I'm Ron Franklin saying so long from Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs>